drinks his beer like it's oxygen. He's my baby, I'm his honey. Never gonna let him go. In spite of ourselves, we'll end up sitting on. I'm Jillian. Welcome to the Greener Grass Tiny House. We are on a remote island in the Pacific Northwest. I lived in it full time for three years. Now it is officially our off-grid, tiny home away from home. I'm excited to share it with you. It won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. When Ken and I decided to move in together, it was kind of, it kind of tore at my heartstrings because I loved my tiny house and I didn't want to leave it. But he's also six foot two and there's no way we could live in here together. I'm not one of those people that could share this space so easily. And it was, again, one of those weird things. He had this property on this island and he's always wanted to build a tiny house. And I was looking for property and I had a tiny house and I was like, well, if we move in together, why don't we move the tiny house onto the island property? And it just, it worked out really beautifully. I am an occupational therapist. I currently do home health. I was a traveling therapist for a number of years, which is how I got into the tiny house world, I guess. In 2015, I was living in downtown Denver. I had a regular job because I'm an adult. I was just paying so much for rent. Like the house was fine, um, but it's it was just didn't seem worth it. And I was also at a kind of a stage in my life where I was feeling like I needed a new goal. You know, sometimes you just need a solid goal. And my mom, she said, hey, I saw this tiny house show. You should build a tiny house. And then you don't have to pay all that, that rent and you can, you know, do whatever. It just, just a random mom idea. And turns out my mom had, a, she's had a lot of good ideas. I just kind of thought about it and was like, Okay, that's cool. And I'm really good at jumping on board with something pretty quick. So immediately I was like, I'm gonna learn how to build. I'm gonna take out a loan. I'm gonna leave my job <laughs> and like jump into the tiny house life. First, let's take a look at the property. We're gonna start by going over to Ken's, my partner's shed down here at the bottom of the property. This is my partner Ken's shed. It's kind of his man cave. It's the whole vision that started the property. At the top of the hill is where we moved my tiny house. So we kind of have our separate spaces that we've both created and thoroughly enjoy. And he's still working on his nonstop. There's still a lot to do. Just walking down the driveway here, we kind of the, the land that separates the tiny house from the man shed. You always have to have something to do. So we've got some cornhole. So here is our fire pit and our schwanker. This is the DIY schwanker that we used to cook. So you make a campfire and then the grill goes up and down and it swings. And I would say this is probably where we spend most of our time when we're out at the island, just because it's such a communal space. Everybody loves a good bonfire. This is where we play guitar. That concludes the tour of the property. So let's go check out the greener grass. Welcome to the Greener Grass Tiny House. When I was designing the space, I wanted it to feel cozy. I knew I wanted a lofted bed. Can't even tell you really why, <laughs> but I just knew I wanted one. And I just, I wanted it to feel comfortable when you came in. First off, this is my bathroom, and this is all reclaimed barn wood. There's a couple pieces in here, like this piece right here is part of an old fence from my childhood home. 
there's just a couple of those pieces that made it like there and there just to kind of add contrast, but to also just remind me a part of my childhood. And I really wanted to have a sliding barn door. I think they make sense for tiny houses also. So this is where my bathroom is behind here. I raised the bathroom up so that I could put some of the plumbing between the shower floor and the actual bottom of the trailer. So I have to step up into my bathroom. I have my nature's head composting toilet, which I love, and I've always enjoyed that. Behind here is my shower, which is a, a horse trough tub. I knew I wanted a horse trough tub. It turns out that was actually one of the cheaper ways to, to do a tub. <laughs> I've got my on-demand water heater back there, so that's all tucked away nicely. I have an earring obsession, and I think for somebody who lives in a tiny house, it's the perfect thing to have <laughs> because you can have a ton of them and it doesn't take up very much space. So I've got my earring collection as one of the collections here. From the bathroom, we move to the kitchen. This kitchen is the second design of the kitchen. Originally, my countertop stopped there and my refrigerator was there. As anybody who has lived in a tiny space knows that it's a constant evolving process. And so I just didn't have enough counter space to cook with. And so I turned an old sewing machine into extra counter space. And if I really wanted more counter space, this folds out to have double the counter space. It allowed for me to put some drawers underneath as well. This cabinet I got at Habitat for Humanity. The sink is actually the second version of the sink because the first sink that I bought was a bar sink. It made sense. It was small, tiny house, perfect. But it was this deep, this big. I broke almost all my dishes because it made no sense. I found a perfect big one basin sink at an antique shop for like $15. And so that has been a huge game changer. I have my two burner propane stove, which I absolutely love. And it's sleek enough to where I can put a cutting board over it and have more counter space. Or when I do my dishes, I can roll the mat out and that's where my dishes can dry. This is actually the third refrigerator of the tiny house. The first refrigerator that I got, again, the idea was to be tiny and it was, you know, the half size kind of dorm fridge, not enough freezer space. And so I knew I needed to upgrade and I knew that I wanted red because who doesn't want a red fridge? I'm just saying. We are actually going to be transitioning to a propane fridge just because we are off grid. We can't utilize this refrigerator like I used to when I lived in it full time on grid. So the next step is to do a propane fridge so we can get back to having cold food. The main source of heat for the tiny house is this Dickinson propane stove. It is amazing how quick it can heat up the tiny house. I mean, it's a tiny space, but we come out here in the middle of winter, it's 40 degrees, turn that bad boy on and within an hour, you're sitting comfortably playing board games. So I love the Dickinson propane heater. Just don't touch it because it's hot. <laughs> here we are at the front of the tiny house and this is the living room, multi-purpose room. As you'll see, I don't have a dining room. I don't have a fold out table like a lot of people have in their tiny house. So this is my office, my living room, my guest bedroom. So what I love about this couch is that it pulls out and it can turn into a queen size bed. In addition to this is where we keep all our linens and everything underneath there. This is actually my favorite part of the tiny house because of the bay window. It just opens it up that much more and brings in so much more light and warmth. So when I was going through my research stage of building the tiny house, the, the budget piece was really difficult for me. And I think that's a huge, when you look at any kind of tiny house feed or people are always asking, how much did it cost? And I think you have to look at the materials that you're going to build with and what you want to 
put extra money into. Like, do you want to buy used windows or do you want to buy new, that kind of stuff. So I budgeted, I took out a loan, a private loan for $30,000. And after it was all said and done, um, it came to about $40,000. So I had ultimately kind of put another 10,000 on credit cards. So it was definitely more than I expected, but I think that goes with any build right? Um, But then also with time. If you don't have the time to seek out a cheaper material, you're going to go and you're going to get that that piece, even if it's going to be more expensive than you hope. And then that's kind of how it adds up over time, right? I can't even imagine how much it would cost if I paid somebody to build it. That was a huge part of it. I wanted to build it, but it was also a a financial thing of like, I'm not going to pay somebody to do that if I could do it myself. I have officially paid off my tiny house, which is a huge weight off my shoulders. I feel like it's just such an accomplishment because finances are, I think, a huge stressor for everybody. And and that was part of the whole idea of building the tiny house is having more money for life. Leaving the living room, heading back towards the front door is under the stairs. We have the closet. So I have two tiers of where I could hang clothes behind the beaded curtain. And then a big design piece with the stairs was that I built in a dresser where I could keep all my clothes. And of course I've got my full length mirror so that I can see what I look like because I find that it's hard to know what you look like in a tiny house. And then of course um, behind everything is more storage some drawers that pull out, some that you just kind of tuck stuff in and it's ever evolving just like everything else. Next, we're gonna head on upstairs to the loft. Welcome to the bedroom up in the loft. One of my favorite parts about the loft is the skylight. It just adds so much more light to such a small space. I have had no issues with the skylight or the roofing, which is really funny because when I first built it, I would wake up in the middle of the night with nightmares that water was just pouring in through the ceiling because I did it myself. And it has been super tight and I am grateful for that. Up here, I have a TV. I have an antenna that goes to the television. When we come out here, we don't watch television, but if we ever wanted to watch a movie, we we could still do that. We are big readers in our family, so we have a lot of books out here. I've got my photo albums. I have four windows up here with some DIY curtains that I made out of a Goodwill shower curtain. (laughs) And they just, they open out so I can keep it open even if it's raining. And it has a really nice cross breeze since there's four of them. I have a queen size bed. It's the mattress that I've had for about 10 years now and I would say it's not ideal. I think the loft is about normal height for a tiny house loft but because I have this really big mattress with a pillow top it decreases the height when you're in bed so I think if I ever were to do that again I would you know get one of those more sleek mattresses just to have a little bit more headspace but it is what it is and it's really comfortable. When I decided, you know, I'm taking it on the road, I bought this big dually, like the biggest dually you could get, biggest cab, longest bed, and I just learned how to drive a dually. Well, I had to go from where I built the tiny house at 8,519 feet, take it down to Denver. So immediately had to learn how to use the towing brakes. And I had my mom with me. She was my partner in crime for the drive out, which was kind of hilarious. At one point we're driving and I kept saying, mom, you have to look to make sure the siding's not coming off, right? I was just worried the house was gonna fall apart as we're driving down the road. And at one point she's like, I think the siding's coming off. And so I like pull over, we're in the middle of Wyoming and I I get out and she's like, it was a shadow. Oh, it was a shadow. (laughs) I was like, mom, you can't do that. This house has gone a little over 1,700 miles on its journey. Getting it to this property, we had to put it on a ferry, 
And that was pretty unique to put a tiny house on a ferry. I loved seeing it. People were really excited about it. But then we had some challenges. We were coming down the hill and the truck kind of skid out on some mud and hit a tree. And uh, we had to hitch and unhitch and rehitch four different times to get it to this particular spot because there's so many tight angles. This is where it's going to be forever. We've got a camping permit through the county, and so we're allowed to camp here 120 days a year. So we can't live in it full time. So we we keep track of every day that we spend the night here and like what we did. We have a little kind of like tiny house diary. I love coming to the island because I love coming to the tiny house because every time it feels like I truly am coming home, God, you're gonna like make me cry because this place has so many memories from not just living in it, but how special I can look at one little thing and it takes me back to the building process. And I think of the friend who helped me with that particular idea or the person that helped get me out of trouble by coming up with another way to do something because more than one idea, it turns out, is a better, <laughs> better way to go. There's so much about it that gives me a lot of pride and I love sharing it with people and I love telling the story. It truly is my happy place. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.